Hi everyone, in this video we will be going over identifying functions. Our essential question for today is, how are functions identified? So again, how are functions identified? So first let's talk about some basic vocabulary and background information. So first we have a word called a relation, and this is a set of one or more ordered pairs. And if you remember, an ordered pair is two numbers that are written in a certain order. Um, and you probably are used to seeing it um, like this, where it's got the parentheses and the negative 4 represents our x value, and the 2 represents our y value. You might also see ordered pairs written in tables, where again you've got an x and a y, then an x and a y. Or you could also see an ordered pair written on a graph, where again you have an x and a y value. And they can all be written in either um, the form as a pair right here in the parentheses, or it can be written in a table, or it can also be written as a graph. Because I could take this 3 and 8 in this table, and I could put it into this form, or I could put it into a graph. Okay, so a relation is basically one or more of these ordered pairs. Now, the set of all input values, which is x, are called the domain. So sometimes you'll hear it talked about as the x value is the same as the domain. And that's just another word for our x values. And another word for our y values is the range. So these are pretty important words to remember. So x's are our domain and y's are our range. Okay, so once again, say we look at this ordered pair, this negative 4 is our domain because it's the x value, and the 2 is the range because it is the y value. Now, again, a relation is a set of one or more ordered pairs, but we also have um, things that are called functions that we're going to talk about in a second as well. So again, if you look at relations, they could also be written as any of these. Before you saw some with just one ordered pair, but you can see that there could be more than one ordered pair to represent it. Now a function is a type of a relation in which there is only one input or an x value for one output, a y value. So as you can see, x and y have a lot of different ways that they are named. Um, x can be called an input or the domain, okay, and y can be called the output or the range. Now one important thing to note is that not all relations are functions. Okay, so I know this sounds really confusing but I will show you exactly what I mean right now. So we've got these two words relations and functions and it doesn't mean that all relations will be functions. And let's look why. So in order for a relation to be considered a function, each member of the domain, so the x value, must be paired with exactly one member of the range. And what this means in a very simple term is that the domain can only have one range. So if you see two or more x's that are the exact same number in the function, then you know you have a problem. So one more time, if you see two or more x's in a function that are the exact same numbers, then you know that it is not a function. Okay, so it's just a relation. Okay, so I'm sure you're feeling like this right now, but it's actually not as bad. Once we start looking at some of the examples, I think you're going to go, oh wow, this is super easy. Okay, so let's, what our whole set of notes today are is to determine out of the relations that you're given, which ones are functions. Okay, so out of the relations that you're given, which ones are functions. Okay, so these are ordered pairs. And you usually represent them um, in the parentheses. So this is a set of ordered pairs. And we've got our x values and our y values. And to find out if it is a function, you need to always ask yourself this question. Are there more than one x value that is the same? So let's look at our x values. Okay, we've got 4, 7, and 5. Okay, so let's just kind of circle those real quick so we see what we've got. These are our x values, 4 and 7 and 5. These are our x values. Are any of those numbers the same? Since they are not, and since they're all different, 
then that means that um, it is a function. Now, if there were numbers that were the same, then um, it would not be a function. So in this case, this is a function because none of the x values are repeating. All right, so let's look at a few examples. And this is going to go on a foldable that I gave you guys. Um, it just makes it a little bit easier for you to put it in. And um, then you can put that foldable wherever you want in your notes. Okay, so let's look at this and then look at your x values to see if any are the same. Okay, so are there any x values that are the same? We've got four, seven, and five. Those are all different, so since they are all different, we know that it is a function. Okay, so again, our x values are four, seven, and five, which means these other values are six, two, and one. And since there is only one x value, for each of those y values, they're all unique x's, then we know that this is a function. Now when you're taking notes, there is a lot of writing on here. However, you don't have to write everything that you see. Write what you think you need to remember your notes, okay? All right, so let's look at this next one. Okay, so we've got a, some x values here and we've got some y values. Our x values are eight, nine and eight, which means the second numbers are y values. So three, five, and six. Now what you can see here is look at those x values. We're trying to see if there's more than one of the same number. And there is. See how there's two eights here and they've repeated? That tells us that it is not a function. It is not a function. So remember, this one had all unique x values, and this one had um, not unique x values, which made it not a function. OK, so let's look at a few more. OK, so let's look at these x values. We've got 4, 3, and 3. Since we see that these 3s are repeating, what do you, you think it is? Is it going to be a function or not a function? Okay, since it repeats those threes in the x values, it is not a function. Okay, so this time we've got five, four, and six as our x values. So would this be a function or not a function? Since they're all unique, it would be a function. And on this one, we've got seven, four, and three. And since all those numbers are unique, then that would make it a function as well. All right, so not too bad, right? So let's look at some with tables. And again, some of these will go into your foldable. But remember, when you see a table, it's the same as writing it like this. So you see that there's a three and an eight um, for our X and our Y values. And you can also write it as um, parentheses three comma eight, which is your point, okay? Four eight could be written as four comma eight and so on. So just as a reminder, points are the same as what you can see in a table. Now, again, our whole goal is to see, do are those x values unique or are um, do they have any that repeat? So let's look at this first one. We've got 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Those are all different x values. None of the numbers repeat. So it is a function. On this one, we have 2, 4, 4 six and eight. We have two fours. And one thing that's kind of important to note is, let's say that this was a four and six, and instead of this being a nine, it was a six. If the y is the same, then it could stay a function because the y's match the x's. However, in this case, we've got two x's that are, diff or that are the same with two different y's, which means that it is not a function. Okay, so now let's look at uh, what's called a mapping diagram. And these look like this. And really what this is saying, if you were to write this into a point, you've got one comma one, you've got two comma two as your point, and so on. And you just look at those x values and see, are there multiple x values that are the exact same? 
Okay, so on this one, you can see that there is one x going towards one y. That means that it is a function. However, and this one kind of tends to be a little bit tricky for people. Um, when you look at it, you can see that um, this 2 is going to two numbers. So when you write that as a, as, a, as a point, you would have it as 2 comma 10 would be one of them. And then the other point would be 2 comma 20. So you can see in this case, our x value is repeating and those y values are different. So that tells us in this case that it is not a function because there are two x values that are the same with different y values. All right, and very last one to look at, um, graphs. And these ones are really, really easy. Now, the graphs are very easy because we just have to use the vertical line test. And this helps us to determine whether the graph is a function or not. Basically, all that it states is if you can draw a vertical line anywhere on a graph so that it hits the graph in more than one spot, then the graph is not a function. So if you draw a line and it hits that graph in more than one spot, then it is not a function. So in this one, we've got a couple examples here that also go on your foldable. And what you do is you just start drawing vertical lines through several points on your graph and you want to see where does it cross that line that is drawn within that graph. And you can see here, it when I draw these vertical lines, it hits at a, a couple different um, you know points right here. But when this line is going through it, it's only crossing at one part. So it's not hitting multiple points on the graph. It's only crossing the graph. This one line is only cropping crossing the graph at one point, and this line is only crossing the graph at one point. So since it is only doing that at one point, that means that it is a function. And the reason behind that is if you were to think of this point, right, um, let's say this one right here, there is only one x value right here at this point. So x right about here is, a, is almost negative one. And so x equals negative one is, and if I look along this line, are there any other points where x where the um, graph crosses at negative one, and there isn't. And the same thing over here. This is about, let's see, one, two, three. X is negative three. And you can see that this blue line only goes through negative three at this one point. Now, since that one's a function, let's look at this other one and draw some vertical lines through it. Now, look at these lines. If I look at this first line, it crosses through this blue graph right here at two points. Okay, so this is almost negative three right here, correct? But the line crosses through the graph about here at an almost negative three here and almost negative three there. That means it has two x values. And again, we don't want anything that has two x values. So we can also look at this one and see here that this is, if we look at this line, it's crossing through that graph at negative one, but it's crossing it here and here. So that means there's two x values. So if it crosses through at two points when you draw that vertical line, we know that it is not going to be a function. It is not going to be a function. Okay, so let's look at these ones. If I draw a line through this one at several points, does it go through and cross at two places? And on this first one, you can see, yes, it does. It crosses here and it crosses here. So it is not a function. So it's not a function. Okay, if I draw some vertical lines on this one, I can draw it anywhere that I want. And no matter where I draw it, it's only going to cross that graph at one unique point. So we know then that this one is a function. So it is a function. Now this next one's a little bit trickier because if you look over here, say I draw a line here, then it looks really good, right? It only crossed the graph at one point. And if I draw here, it only crosses at one point. And if I draw here, it only crosses at one point. However, I have to look at the whole graph, 
Okay, so as you can see so far, it's only crossed at one point. But if I draw one right through here, you can see now that it crosses through two, actually one, two, three points, which makes this not a function. So not a function. Okay, so you've got some practice problems to do and on these ones, um, there's not much that you're gonna put into Edpuzzle. You're just gonna say if it's yes or no on whether it's a function. But what you need to do is, and this is a little bit of a unique uh, foldable, but it's very easy. You're going to change these ordered pairs into a mapping, a table, and a graph. And then just say, is it a function or not? Okay. Um, and then the same thing here, you're gonna take this mapping one, put it into ordered pairs, put it into a table and a graph. Now remember when, just look back at some of those examples that we did earlier, where I kind of showed you how they become ordered pairs. Um, and this should be pretty easy. Um, if not, then we can also go over it in class tomorrow. Okay, so give these um, a shot. And if you have any questions, let me know.